The Spanish royal family releases their annual Christmas card. King Harold V of Norway opens the longest railway in the Nordics. Sheikha Moza opens the second Derisha Performing Arts Festival. King Charles III of the United Kingdom celebrates the 150th anniversary of the RNCB and members of the Swedish royal family host a glittering gala dinner at the royal palace. All this and much more coming up next on your Royal Daily News. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to my channel. My name is Alexandra, and this is your Royal Daily News for December 12th, 2022. In Madrid, the Spanish royal family released their annual Christmas card featuring Her Royal Highness Princess Leonor of Asturias and Her Royal Highness Infanta Sofia of Spain. The photo was taken in the fall on the grounds of Palacio de la Zarzuela in Madrid. On the back of the card, the royal family writes, quote, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year 2023. Very affectionately and with our best wishes. Signed, Felipe R., Leticia R., Leonor, Princesa de Asturias, and Sofia, Infanta de España, end quote. Meanwhile, His Majesty King Felipe VI of Spain presided over the annual meeting with the Board of Trustees of the Fundación Pro Real Academia at Palacio El Pardo in Madrid. In the afternoon, His Majesty the King participated in a meeting with the Board of Trustees from the Fundación Princesa de Girona at Palacio Real de Madrid. In Den Haag, Her Majesty Queen Maxima of the Netherlands in her capacity as the United Nations Secretary General Special Advocate for Inclusive Finance for Development, held a meeting with the Prime Minister of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam, Mr. Pham Minh Chin, at the Palais House Tenbosch. According to a press release, during the meeting, discussions focused on, quote, the progress of financial inclusion in Vietnam, the importance of reliable telecommunication connections for individuals in remote areas of Vietnam, and the development of digital identity documents for better access to the digital economy, end quote. In Oslo, His Majesty King Harald V of Norway and His Royal Highness Crown Prince Håkon of Norway arrived at Oslo Central Station to open the new Folo Line Railway Tunnel. According to a press release, quote, with a top speed of 250 kilometers per hour, the 22 km Folo line is the longest railway tunnel in the Nordics. The trains will ensure that the journey time between Oslo and Ski is halved from 22 to 11 minutes. End quote. Upon their arrival at the Oslo Central Station, His Majesty the King and the Crown Prince were warmly welcomed by the Prime Minister of Norway, Mr. Jonas Stora, and the Norwegian Transport Minister, Mr. John Ivar Nygaard. After cutting of the ribbon and cheers all around, His Majesty the King and the Crown Prince, along with the ministers and other government officials, boarded the high-speed train to the town of Ski. Yesterday afternoon, Their Majesties King Harald V and Queen Sonia of Norway held an audience with the former United States Secretary of State, Mrs. Hillary Rodham Clinton, at the Royal Palace in Oslo. Mrs. Clinton is in Norway in connection with the Oslo Peace Days. According to a press release from the University of Oslo, Oslo Peace Days is a forum where individuals can learn about and discuss some of the most important topics of our time. In Stockholm, Their Majesties King Carl Gustav and Queen Sylvia of Sweden, accompanied by Their Royal Highnesses Crown Princess Victoria and Prince Daniel of Sweden, and His Royal Highness Prince Carl Philip of Sweden, participated in a meeting with the European Union Minister, Miss Jessica Roswell, at the Kulniga Slatet. As Nobel Prize Week came to a close last evening, Their Majesties King Carl Gustav and Queen Sylvia of Sweden hosted the traditional Nobel Prize Laureates Gala Dinner, held at the Royal Palace in Stockholm. The evening began with the royal family holding a smaller reception for the Nobel Laureates. Thereafter, the gala dinner began in Carl XI's gallery. Guests in attendance included Their Royal Highnesses Crown Princess Victoria and Prince Daniel of Sweden, Their Royal Highnesses Prince Carl Philip and Princess Sophia of Sweden, Princess Christina, Mrs. Magnussen, and her husband, Mr. Tord Magnussen, the winners of the 2022 Nobel Prize, representatives from the Nobel Prize Foundation, members of the Swedish Parliament, 
local government officials, members of the diplomatic corps, academics, and members of Swedish society. Her Royal Highness Princess Marie of Denmark sat down for an interview with the Danish magazine Hjel Nu earlier this month when she was in Copenhagen carrying out several engagements. The French-born princess begins the interview by stating, quote, Denmark is always in my thoughts. I want to make a difference. If I can use my platform and my position to make a difference, which is the least I can do, then of course I will do it, end quote. The magazine noted that the 46-year-old princess said that the best aspect of her life and work as a princess is to help others. In the summer of 2023, Princess Marie and her family will move from France. As you may know by now, Princess Marie's husband, Prince Joachim of Denmark's contract as a defense attaché at the Danish embassy, was not renewed. Rumors began circulating in Denmark and abroad that the family would be moving to Washington, D.C., where the prince will take up a position at the Danish embassy. However, the prince, as well as the Danish royal court, have yet to confirm if this story is true. Upon hearing the rumors, the princess smiled and noted that it was, quote, too early to comment on the future, end quote. Instead, Princess Marie shifts the focus on her children, Prince Henrik, 13, and Princess Athena, 10, saying they had three wonderful years in her homeland. Quote, it is a huge gift for them. They couldn't really speak French before, and now they can. I really appreciate that. That way they can also talk with my mother and father. They have also gotten to know the French culture. They have both cultures in them, and that's very important to them. Although there is no doubt that they are very much Danish. It's lovely. End quote. The princess goes on to say that wherever the family moves to in the summer of 2023, she will continue to work with her patronages. Quote, I will continue to work with great joy and pleasure. These are all matters that mean a lot to me. These are important issues that need support, and I'd like to continue to give my full support to my patronages. End quote. In Monte Carlo, Her Serene Highness Princess Stephanie of Monaco, accompanied by her youngest daughter, Miss Camille Gottlieb, attended the 2022 Fight AIDS Monaco Christmas Party. On Saturday afternoon, Louis and Marie Ducroy announced that they were expecting a baby girl during a gender reveal party in Monte Carlo. Their little one is expected to arrive sometime in early 2023. The birth of Louis and Marie's child will be the first granddaughter of Her Serene Highness Princess Stephanie of Monaco and the seventh great-grandchild of the late Prince Rainier III and Princess Grace of Monaco. Keeping on the baby theme here, the Imperial House of Napoleon announced that Prince Jean-Christophe Napoleon and Princess Olympia Napoleon welcomed their first child, a healthy baby boy, on December 7, 2022. The prince and princess named their new bundle of joy Prince Louis Charles Ripon Victor Jérôme Marie. Yesterday afternoon in Doha, Her Highness Sheikha Moza bint Nasir Akatar as chairperson of the Qatar Foundation, and Her Excellency Sheikha Hind bint Hamid Atahani of Qatar, vice chairperson and CEO of the Qatar Foundation attended the opening ceremony of the second edition of the Qatar Foundation's Darisha Performing Arts Festival. The seven-day festival, which is being held during the 2022 FIFA World Cup Qatar, celebrates Arab culture and heritage through a range of unique performances, educational workshops, and fun activities that can be enjoyed by people from all ages and interests. The festival began with a concert by the Qatar Philharmonic Orchestra, that took visitors on a cultural journey by exploring the country's past, present, and future. Thereafter, a musical performance entitled The Journey of Ibn Battuta. The performance featured regional actors alongside students from the QF's pre-university education schools, as well as members of the wider community. The performance highlighted the adventures of the famous Arab explorer Ibn Battuta. Well, you should know that by now because I just mentioned it. Why did I write that sentence again? Anyways, it looks like a great performance. Meanwhile, in Muscat, His Highness Saeed Bilirad bin Haytham al-Sayed of Oman as Honorary President of the Rising Omani Startups Program 
attended the opening of the 2022 Investment and Startup Summit, held at the Oman Convention and Exhibition Center. The two-day summit, organized by the Authority for Small and Medium Enterprises, comprises of, quote, specialized workshops in which decision makers and investment specialists and representatives of nascent firms will debate the startup system in Amman, business accelerators for government and private companies, and the establishment of private investment funds with exclusive branches for startups, end quote. Last evening in Amman, his Majesty Sultan Haytham bin Tariq al Sayyid of Oman, as the Supreme Commander of the Oman Armed Forces, hosted a gala dinner at Al Alam Palace on the occasion of the Sultan's Armed Forces Day. Guests attending the gala dinner included the Deputy Prime Minister for Defense Affairs, Omani ministers, commanders of the Sultan's Armed Forces, the Royal Oman Police, and senior military as well as civil officers. In Hereford, his Majesty King Charles III of the United Kingdom, as patron, visited the Royal National College for the Blind on the occasion of the school's 150th anniversary. During today's celebrations, His Majesty the King unveiled a plaque, met with students who are being equipped with the skills to live independently and to prepare them for university and work, as well as with volunteers. His Majesty the King also watched a demonstration of blind football. Meanwhile, His Royal Highness the Duke of Gloucester, as patron of the Heritage of London Trust, opened the newly restored historic entrance to the Queen Mary's Hospital in Stratford. According to Buckingham Palace, the Heritage of London Trust, quote, supported the restoration work of the hospital's entrance, whose patron was Queen Mary, the Duke's grandmother, end quote. In London, His Royal Highness the Duke of Kent attended a Christmas concert organized by the St. Mungo's Charity Association. On Sunday, Buckingham Palace released the official Christmas card for Their Majesties King Charles III and the Queen Consort of the United Kingdom. The image was taken during the 2022 Braemar Games on September 3rd by Mr. Samir Hussein, days before the death of Queen Elizabeth II. Also on Sunday, the organization, the Queen's Green Canopy, announced that His Majesty King Charles III of the United Kingdom has written the foreword for the new book entitled The Queen's Green Canopy. Published by Eberry in 2023, the book celebrates the ancient woodlands and trees dedicated to Queen Elizabeth II for the Platinum Jubilee. Over the weekend, Kensington Palace released two new photos of Her Royal Highness the Princess of Wales, ahead of the second Together at Christmas Carol service to be held at Westminster Abbey on December 15, 2022. According to an ITV press release, this year's service will pay tribute to Queen Elizabeth II. The service will also recognize the selfless efforts of individuals, families, and communities across the United Kingdom and highlight the remarkable impact that coming together to support others can have for us all. In Bangkok, Her Royal Highness Princess Maha Shaktri of Thailand opened the photo exhibition entitled Roaming in Thailand, held at the Bangkok Art and Cultural Center. And finally, on this day in royal history, in 1992, Her Royal Highness the Princess Royal married Commander Timothy James Hamilton Lawrence at Crathy Kirk in Scotland. The Princess and Timothy Lawrence met in 1986 aboard the Royal Yacht Britannia when he was a commander in the Royal Navy. In 2020, His Royal Highness Prince Philippos of Greece married Miss Nina Fleur in a private civil ceremony in St. Moritz, Switzerland. On October 23, 2021, the couple were married in a religious ceremony at the Metropolitan Cathedral of the Annunciation in Athens, Greece. And there you have it. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will be back tomorrow on Tuesday, December 13th, with all the latest world news. Until then, I wish you all a wonderful evening and a great day tomorrow. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Okay, take care, everyone. I will see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.